or the oppressor in the room or the one that's the most dominant. So right. they would say that I'm the strongest in the tent. But no, I want to be the weakest in the tent because those nine are going to get me stronger. They're going to sharpen me up and they're right. going to make me better because I'm the weak link of what's going on. But if I'm the strong point, then I may not be as enthused to practice or to do better. I may take it easy because I'm in that position. You right. get what I'm saying? So it's just a mentality that I took on years ago when I had the wrong people around me, when I had nine, you know, negative energies around me. And that's how I became more negative. But when then I start putting four positive people around me, it balanced a little bit. Then when I say, you know what, let me make everybody around me better than me, smarter than me, more positive than me, that do it better than me. So that way it makes me want to achieve more as opposed to me just waking up being content with the position that I'm in. That's why I strive every day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, that's, that's, it's indicative of like how you said, like longevity. You know, I think for a lot of artists, the biggest thing that I always try for, I always ask myself this question, even in this moment, I say, who was me before I got here and where did they go? Because I don't want to be them. I want to keep going. Right. Ability, and I say yeah. that all the time. I, I can look at an old picture of me and be like, I don't know him no more. Wow. But he, but, but he helped me get here. He did. He did. I mean, he, he helped said, me get here. Yeah. I mean, look at, like you said, like, I mean, obviously, running down the whole, running down the whole legacy, 1993, Soup's on Soul Train, right? They do the interview, and they talk about, like, what's your goals? And you talked about being a student of the game. I on Soul you Train? Said, being, you said it on Soul Train. You said being a student of the game. You said Dre taught me to be a student of the game so that I could diversify and continue to grow and not just be here for a moment. Something, I'm yeah. paraphrasing that part, but you said being a student of the game. That's crazy because that just shows you even as a youngster, I knew that I had to work on my craft yeah. and I had to study the ones before me. See, studying doesn't mean just listening and reading. It means studying the greats before you so you can be better than them or take a little piece of them and add on to their legacy and run the race further than they could run it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who, who are your influences? Not just, not just art music, but, but artistry. Just of all kinds. Wow. Um, I truly, 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 um, I love all forms of life. It could be from painters to musicians to architects to lawyers to people who speak well. I just have a love for originality and people that just stand out. Yeah. I have a love for people that, that don't mind being different, Yeah. That don't mind, you know, setting a trend and, and taking a chance and living on the edge and you know it may not feel good to you but it feel good to them and yeah. if it feel good to you it must be good for you yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> when did you start did you always live like that or when did it click in like okay this is gonna be my authenticity because the it came yeah yeah, yeah, it, yeah it came to me it came to me brother like you know being around dr dre and the doc and great artists at an early age, you know, they were already seasoned. So like I said, I was a student, so I wanted to learn and they were able to teach. Like a lot of times, if you're a student, you don't get no teachings. You just, someone who wants knowledge and you can't get it because there's not enough information to give to you. But yeah. when you're a student and you're around people who can teach you and they love giving you information and you grow with that information, then you can become a great student and eventually a great teacher. Being a sponge, being a sponge. And look yes, at everybody. Sir. We're here talking about American Soul. You guys, this needs no introduction. You guys know exactly who I'm talking to. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and I'm excited to learn so much about this because this brother has really spoke life to me on so many levels. Uh, American Soul comes on tonight. This is a conversation. <laughs> about soul. I'm already you know. T-bowing this shit, so whatever he's talking about, I, ain't, I don't care. I'm, I'm getting it all in. Even after we finish right. talking, I'm going to watch it again and again and again. Right. You better catch up. Quit being late. What episode y'all on? <laughs> so I always say like it's funny because as people catch it and I remember this from power the blessing is that when it becomes a show that gets word of mouth it's like like no pun intended it's like a train leaving the station and you just gain more and more and more and more momentum you know yeah and, you and see the, the beauty the beauty of the word of mouth is when it's good you don't have to say nothing <laughs> right now it's like now you're getting it like man the show is where it need to be because now it's in the conversation. Yeah. It ain't about numbers. It's the conversation because yeah. once they get there, the numbers going to come because they're going to watch it. They're going to keep watching it. They're going to be locked and loaded. They're going to know what's the story behind this artist, 
How did Don treat this person? What happened right. here? What was up with Dick Clark, American Bandstand, the right. whole nine? And I had a relationship with Dick Clark too. That's even more crazy. Hey, and, and so did was he authentic when you saw him in the show? Is that how he rolled? Dick Clark was well, by the time I met Dick Clark, he was on love with everybody. Cause let me tell you what he did for me. When my record came out. I was nominated for an American Music Award, and the American Music Award was on ABC. <clears throat> and at the time, I had a murder case that I was fighting. Mm -hmm. So ABC was like, we would, Disney or whoever, whatever big company they was with, was like, nah, he can't come on the show because he got a murder case and blah, blah, this and that. <clears throat> Dick Clark went to bed and told them, hold on. He ain't been found guilty. His music is the shit. I love him. We love him. The nigga coming on. He going to win an award, and he going to perform. And Dick laid it out for me, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, God, this is some... And then he had a conversation with me about why he did it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So maybe he had a, a moment in time where he was like, you know what? Everything I've done in the past needs to be, you know, reprimanded by the future, by me I'm learning sorry. the ins and outs of what it takes to be, you know, a great businessman and a great person. So yes. I have nothing but great things to say about Dick Clark because he rolled Absolutely. for Snoop Dogg. When they didn't ride for me and got me on the American Music Awards, I won my award, performed, and I left. And set the precedent for where it was, what was about to become the legacy for now. You get what I'm saying? But somebody no. on their side got to somebody got to give you approval on their side too. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's that's the American Soul story too. Remember, it's like, well, I want my own, I want my own, but you got to get that. Right. You go, right. Elton John. One of them gonna have to come on at, in right. order for it to. It ain't right. gonna happen. Right. Right. And you could relate to that because you saw that in your own personal life. And yes. I'm always thinking, absolutely, absolutely. But you've been authentic the whole way through. And I think that's the thing is like, what was the commitment to you to say, I'm gonna be me. And this is just me knowing you. And this is this is just me knowing you. But then even in just like unpacking like The Breakfast Club, unpacking like Live on Detroit, we're talking about your play. And that's really just like bearing it all. And right. you go, I'm gonna be authentic every single day. And that's what's gonna well, be the, the, the easiest thing for you and me to do is to do us. Yeah. The hardest thing for me to do is to do you. Now, if I'm an actor, I may get close, I may, you know, get similar, but yeah. I can't do you. Yeah. But as far as doing me, man, I yeah. wake up out of bed doing this shit easy. This is an easy thing. This is roll yeah. over and get it done. And just get it done. And once more people realize that and start to tune in and, and hone in on who they are and why God built them the way he built them, then we'll have more greatness in the world. We'll have more people being original and being who they are. That's what the foundation was built on. They love black because black was different. Absolutely. Black had a different style, a different sound. And when you put him on screen, he looked different. When you put him in the movie, he looked different. When you put him on a record, he sound different. Black Absolutely. was different. It Absolutely. wasn't just like plain. It was different. So it's like, we're going to continue to be what we're going to be. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's what you saw. If you remember that episode, I know you do, when Don was trying to pitch his show to a higher distributor, and he said, my kids don't watch it, and the kids were outside. And the kids was outside right. dancing, doing the pop lock. Dance. The motherfuckers was out there routining. Then at the end of the episode, little boy run up and say, hey, man, no, his daddy say, hey, come in here. Do y'all watch Soul Train? Nigga live right in front of his daddy. No. As soon as Don Cornelius leave, hey, Mr. Cornelius, can I have your autograph? Don should yeah. said, fuck you and your daddy. Get the fuck out of my face. But I know y'all cleaned it up for TV and made him sign the autograph. But the real Don would have been like, fuck you and your daddy, you bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> that's, you know, and that's you doing the real man because as many times as I heard that, I remember when someone said, yeah, hey, listen, Don didn't play. He pulled you to the side and be like, get your ass out of here right now. He, he had no somebody. play in it. He liked your granddaddy, like your, your mean ass uncle. He was like that, but he but he yeah. he meant what he said because he meant business. Yeah. Like, and you have to respect yeah. when you look at what he built. How you gonna fight somebody that built this from nothing, man? Yeah, he know yeah. what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that's the thing is like I saw that as I I remember this, and I always talk about this when I sat down with Tony Cornelius, and I know you sat down with Tony, yes, and sir. I said uh, PC was like, yeah, man, you know, he started talking real smooth. He said, yeah, man. Uh, I really felt like you had the essence in the room and I thought you was gonna bring it to the table. And I started watching his mannerisms. He's like, what are you doing? I said, well, look, man, if you are your father's son, then you are only gonna replicate the original image. So I'm gonna steal everything from you and that's gonna be my gateway. So I remember I had this image of Tony being cool as a fan 
but ready to just listen and give just wisdom. And I had this one image where I saw Don when he was walking off set and something happened off set that was not on the camera of Soul Train. This was in the original season. He looks off and right before he steps off stage, he drops his eyes like that. And he has a frown on his face. I said, oh, that's the man. He was about to check somebody right there. Mm -hmm. That's enough. That's enough, that look. You know that look? Your mom used to yeah. get that look from across the table yeah, when like, you're acting a yeah. fool. Wait, wait till, wait till we get outside. Wait till we get home. I'm beating wait your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to remind me to whip your ass when we get home. I got to remind you? <laughs> I'm not going to remind you of that, man. I'm going to bed. <laughs> nah, man. I mean, like, so you, I mean, obviously, authenticity, you know, because your cosign is everything. Authenticity to the 70s. And I know the 70s is one of your favorite eras. Man, music. quit playing. You remember some of my first videos, Doggy Dog World, where I had Fred Williams. Yo. I had Yo. Uh, Pam Breer, Huggy Bear, Ron O'Neill, Rudy Ray Moore. I had all of the greats that were still alive. I had all of them in my video that we shot as an homage to the 70s as a throwback. Doggy Dog World, and I had the dramatics singing in the video because that's what that era meant to me. I grew up in the 70s, so my thing was when I get in, I'm going to touch the era that meant the most to me, but I want to do it with them. If they're still alive, go get them and let's bring them back to life. Yeah, yeah, and you did that. And that's why, like, even when I saw that you loved the show, I was like, that's why I said again, I was like, that's the cosign because I know the music. You know, a lot of people. Every Saturday, Soul Train used to come on, my brother. And every Saturday, we would race to the TV to yeah. sit in front of that motherfucker for two hours to watch Soul Train and to watch them commercials and the dance. And I'm talking about, and then when it was over, we going outside, doing the new moves, and and the trying dance. it out, like, what's happening? That's what everybody has told me when they come up to me in the street, and they're like, yo, man, Don, Soul Train, listen, I want you to understand, it's Saturday morning when I was watching, and it's not a color thing. And I remember you saying this about music, and you said music will connect every race. Because music is transcendental. And Soul Train being so based in music, I've had so many people, different colors, different walks of life, come up to me and be like, American Soul, Soul Train. Saturday morning, Don was the coolest man on the planet. If I went back to school Monday and I didn't know the dance, you, you, couldn't, a, you couldn't talk. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, it was, it was that rooted in the community to where there's certain things we watched on Saturday. We definitely watched cartoons. Fat yeah. Albert and all that got in there, Popeye yeah. and all that. But when yeah. that damn Soul Train came on, and the